um, by race, a topological or biological term uh, that refers to genetically based biological differences within a species. Um, this can show up in different features like your skin color, um, your hair type, whether it's curved or any straight, and other features like your lips, your nose, how are those things going to come out for each of the biological differences. <laughs> Um, in addition, anthropologists recognize three different categories for race. We have Mongolian, which are people of Asian descent, Caucasian, which are uh, basically people of European white folks, and Negroid, which are people of uh, African descent. And I'll put these terms up here for you. So, um, sociologist interests are in not so much the biological, but um, the meanings that are ascribed to these biological terms. So, um, <clears throat> behaviors that can lead to uh, discrimination and unfair treatment to people that uh, may look a little different. Uh, that can result, like I said, in inequality based on social characteristics rather than biological. Um, talking about ethnicity, <clears throat> those are mainly social characteristics. Um, for example, an American's gonna have issues defining the difference between a Hutu and a Tutsi. Uh, remember from your text, those were the, uh, the two groups in Africa. Um, there's also um, the Serbian, the Bosnian, the Croats. It's kind of hard to tell them based on how they look. It's mainly a social thing um, based on language, social behavior, and culture. So, um, and these characteristics are what can confirm minority status upon a certain group within society. <laughs> so, um, dominant group's feelings towards this minority group are going to determine how the minority group is treated. Um, the, by saying that there is a minority group, you're implying that there's a majority group that has more privileges, more social status, and um, they're basically better than the minority group, which is kind of a tricky, tricky statement to make. You don't want to always say that. <clears throat> so this point leads us to our next question, which is, why do dominant groups react against minorities? And what we have are, um, uh, yeah, we know that racial and ethnic conflicts have a lot of their roots in um, economic differences. So if you look, when there's lots of jobs, lots of cheap food, um, you know, people don't really care about who gets that job or who gets the cheap food or the house or whatever. But when these things become expensive and more competitive, um, differences become to be noticed a little more. So you're going to be more prone to point out differences in somebody else. Like, oh, well, all these people are getting my resources that I used to be able to get for you know easily and for very cheap. What's going on here? Um, a good example of these uh, differences coming to the forefront is university admission. In the last 10 years, um, getting into a state university has become, they've become kind of overcrowded and it's become a little harder. And because of this, because of the increase in admissions and uh, making it harder to get in, people start noticing a lot of differences and voicing them pretty good uh, vocally. Uh, for example, at the University of Georgia, um, there was concerned that African Americans weren't getting a lot of um, the admission, that they were being left out. Uh, and also in the University of California, a lot of the white students were concerned that the Asian students were getting admission preference over them at the, uh, at the university. <clears throat> so those are some kind of you know, examples of these things coming out. And then with you know, our economic issues right now, you may see more of this coming up. <laughs> Right. So, uh, when we have when we have minority groups, there are different ways of um, reacting to them. Um, and the text lists, I think, five different ways. Uh, your first reaction is going to be assimilation. Your another one is pluralism. Your third is relocation. Uh, the next method is subjugation, and finally, you have extermination. 
Now we're going to work a little bit more with these terms in small groups in just a second. I'm going to get you to uh, kinder groups of two or three, <clears throat> and I'm going to get. And we have five terms. So five groups of three, I think we'll do. And I'm going to give you each one of these terms, and then I'm going to get you to come up with, with some examples and a definition, and then we'll discuss it as a whole class. So if you three want to come together, you three there. You three here. So I'm going to write the terms on the board. So a different focus on assimilation. This group here do uh, pluralism, <laughs> subjugation, and subjugation. Yeah. And then you have to do the experiments. <laughs> yeah. Just to come up with one or two examples, we'll do is we'll go over the definition and then we'll come back to your groups and then we can come up with some um, some examples. So, first I'm going to get assimilation, and that is when <clears throat> assimilation occurs, man. there are two groups uh, that used to be distinct and are longer, no longer distinguishable, uh, just based on appearance alone. <clears throat> so, all right, next up we have pluralism. Pluralism is when two or more groups remain distinct but live together in harmony. Intolerance of their differences. <clears throat> Next up, relocation. Uh, relocation is a simple way of treating differences among people. Uh, if we can't tolerate one another then, and live together, then the easiest thing to do is to move other groups into other areas where they can exist in relative peace. Uh, subjugation is when the dominant group places the subordinate group into um, slavery or into a position of. And finally, extermination is an ultimate reaction when the dominant group um, decides that they no longer want to live with the minority group and they also don't want the minority group to live anymore. Um, so that results in things like ethnic cleansing and uh, populism. I didn't understand that. Assimilation. What's that? Assimilation. Assimilation? Yeah. Oh, assimilation is when. Um, Basically, two groups uh, that used to be distinct are no longer distinct. They pretty much look and act the same. They've kind of come into like, a, they've come to live together, and you can't tell the differences socially or biologically. And I'll come, I'll talk to y'all more about that. So, um, 